Jeremy Birmingham from uh, Letterman Road. Jeremy. Hey, Brian. Uh, you guys on the recruiting trail are regularly going against some of the best programs in the country. Um, you know, we hear a ton about the culture buzzword. What do you, what do you think your receiver room, where do you think it best exemplifies the difference between the culture at Ohio State and other places? And how do you present that to recruits when you're having the opportunity to talk to them? Uh, well, I think that, one, there's no trail anymore. I think it's just more like a recruiting room. We just sit in our room all the time. But I would say that, you know, I, I really try not to focus on other programs. I just focus on what uh, Coach Day and our culture has to offer. Um, I'll let the, you know, the people outside the building or the recruits making the decision to, to evaluate both and uh, let them kind of actually give me feedback on what they see versus us and them. I think it's always interesting. But uh, I really just focus on what we, we offer, um, how we offer it. And then uh, and maybe how and why maybe I'm different uh, than others. Um, I pride myself on that. Um, so, uh, you know, for the, the, the multitude of reasons, um, I kind of just, again, convey our information, make sure they're very clear on that. They have a clear picture of who we are. And then if that's not for them, that's fine. You know, but I want to make sure that they're making a decision based on real information about how uh, our approach uh, to worldviews and how our culture is in the building, you know. Got it. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. All right, we'll go next to uh, Tim Hall, 97.1, the fan. Tim? All right, sorry, I think I'm good now. Brian, I was just wondering, I was looking up some uh, numbers and watching some some clips from Terry McLaurin this morning, and first I was wondering if you, if you stay in touch with him, and I also was wondering if just the player that he's turned into, really his skills and the type of person that he is, if that gives you even a better idea of what you are looking for and what kind of wide receivers you would gravitate towards? Uh, I think that, uh, oh, definitely stay in touch with Terry. We, uh, we talk a lot. I would say, I don't think it's really changed my, my viewpoint. I think my viewpoint's kind of always been the same. I kind of always had my opinion. It'll evolve a little bit, but I wouldn't say it's based purely on Terry. I think Terry's a phenomenal player. I thought he was a phenomenal player when he was here. I think that um, a lot of what he is, uh, been able to accomplish so early in his career has not been overly surprising to me. I think that I'm really happy he's been given the opportunity or earn, I should say, earn the opportunity early in his career. Um, maybe didn't know how long that would take, but everything we see on Sundays, uh, you know, I, we saw in practice, you know, it's just it's a fine line between, um, you know, having roles and, and really filling those roles. And if you're asked to do a lot, you know, you can do a lot like he's doing in Washington, but uh, we had some, we have so many different guys that do different things. And, uh, and uh, he really exemplified his role, whether it be on special teams or offense and, and got really, really good at being a receiver at Ohio state and then took those skills onto the NFL. And now the rest of the country can kind of see them. I had one on your current receiving core and it's, I think Chris and Garrett are just doing so well right now. It's not that we're not seeing any of your freshman receivers, the true freshmen, but so much was made of, of guys like Julian Fleming. And we saw a great touchdown catch from Jackson Smith and Jigba. Just wondering if you can give some insight into what these true freshmen are doing in practice throughout the week and who's really catching your eye. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, they're all studs, man. So, um, you know, I think that, you know, Many different thoughts. I think they're doing a really good job. I think that th their ability um, to learn multiple spots like they have to get in the game um, is really hard for a young receiver. Uh, a lot of guys are making a big impact on special teams. Uh, those roles will continue to grow. Uh, but, you know, this is a different kind of year. To, to expect things to be the same as before it would be a, a poor assumption. So, you know, these guys are, are, are doing a really good job. And uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, if I want to be a really, really, really good receiver, I want to play with the best. And uh, these are some guys that I want to come play with. So uh, these guys uh, uh, keep you very, very, very optimistic when it comes to the receiver room at Ohio State. All righty. We'll we got a lot of hands raised, so let's just try to limit the one question if we can. We'll go to uh, Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch next. To Bill. Hi, Brian. Uh, the Ohio State receiving group the last several years has been characterized by balance. Um, that's obviously not the case this year with, with Garrett and, and Chris. 
are, are you comfortable with, with the way that the, the pass have been distributed? Obviously, those guys are great players, and maybe you just want the ball in their hands as much as possible. But it, are you fine with the balance right now? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, I, I would want every single person, all 15 of us, to have 100 catches for 1,500 yards and all be <laughs> final from the Blitnikoff. Uh, but it's probably not realistic, probably. So I think that, you know, as natural, as competitors, as athletes, I mean, you know, you're going you're gonna to talk to the leading receiver on the team sometimes, not necessarily our team, but a lot of teams, and they still think they can do more. They still want the ball more. They still want to make more of an impact. They still want to block more. They, you know, so it, it's, that's the ever ongoing, uh, you know, habits, or, or I should say, what should I say, you know, mindset for an elite athlete. We always want to do more. We can do more. Let me do that route. I can do that route. I mean, so it never changes. I think that um, every year is different. Uh, and uh, as long as we continue to, you know, win in the winning column, put the right numbers in the winning column, uh, everyone's going to be uh, just a okay. So uh, really focusing on that. How do we provide impact, whether it be as, as, you know, catching the ball, blocking on the perimeter, special teams, and frankly, just having a good attitude and coming in the building and, and giving a great scout look sometimes. Everyone carries a role. And uh, our job is to be the best at that role. So I think we kind of exemplify that. We'll continue to build on it. I'm not saying there's ever not any some frustrations. There always is. We're athletes. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we know what's most important. All right, next up, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Dan. Yeah, Brian, I mean, with Chris and Garrett both playing a majority of a snap so far this year, is it, in your, in your eyes, is it hard to take either of them off the field with how well they've both played so far this year? Uh, I, I wouldn't say, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of a fluid situation. I think that, you know, we've done a good job. I would say we probably I have to go back and look at it. Um, but maybe the, the, the pace at which we go, I'm not, I don't know if it's the same as far as needing the sub and all those things. But at the end of the day, uh, we feel pretty good at where we're at. We're continuing to keep be mindful of that. At the end of, and we really, you know, it's not a 12 game season, you know, and, and, and hopefully we'll fully get there, but at least from a regular season standpoint. Uh, so the, the play count is going to be different this season. And, and the guys aren't going to have nearly probably the load at the end of the year when you go back and check it, you know, and check it all out. So that's all part of the equation. Uh, you know, the amount of time we're getting some two tight end formations in there in the game. I mean, there's a lot that goes in there when it comes to rotation and kind of come to, you know, snaps. But uh, right now it's a week by week uh, analysis, whether, you know, we do get, five wideouts in there or, or one, you know, just, it all depends on game plan and, and kind of where we're at currently. Thanks, Brian. Yep. Next up, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Nathan. Hey, Brian, you, you just mentioned special teams a little bit ago uh, as far as the freshman contributions. And I, uh, it's something all, all of you coaches bring up from time to time. I'm wondering how special teams performance factors into your evaluation of the athletes in your room. If you understand what I'm asking, like, does it, is it a part of how you're, assessing what role those guys can get or what they can what they can do long term yeah absolutely I think that um there's a lot that goes into that I think that the general statement frankly is that uh, if we can't trust you on special teams I don't know how we're going to trust you on offense or defense so and not that one's less than the other it's just that when it comes to earning roles everything comes through special teams uh before we can get to offense and defense and uh the best players play at Ohio State, and that's how we look at it. So um, that's never going to change. I think that uh, you got to play at a high level on special teams because really, there's there's nothing more that exemplifies football in its in its uh, um, simplest form than you know blocking, you know unselfish play, and uh, and scheme oriented. Um, so you know if you're a great blocker, in order to play on offense, why aren't you holding up on punt block or, or blocking somebody on KOR? So um, we view it that way. I think that uh, it's tough to get on special teams. It's not just easy. Nothing's just given to somebody. We say the best players play. So you'd be really good at your roles. You've got to take special teams periods and individual periods really uh, important as you do like receiver drills. And uh, the more we do that, the more it translates into offense and defense. And so it's definitely a big part of uh, our eval. You know, when we, Coach Barnes or, or uh, Coach Parker Fleming asks, you know, do you trust this guy? Will you get this job done? You know, you're going to get seven reps a game if you're on punt, maybe, or a punt block or KOR. 
it's a one shot, one kill mentality. And you got one shot. You don't, you don't line back up and do it again. So uh, you got to make sure guys operate at a high level and, uh, and trust is a big factor uh, in those plays. All right. We'll go next to Dave Biddle from 247. Dave? Mike, hey, Brian. Um, when you look at Jamison Will, uh, Williams and the four freshmen, uh, who are one or two guys out of that group that really needs to step up as maybe that number three wide receiver, number four wide receiver for you guys down the stretch? No, uh, they're all stepping up. They're all doing a good job. Uh, there's not necessarily one in particular that needs to do more. We got to continue to do what we're doing at a high level. And, uh, and when the plays come to us, we got to make the play. We got a competitive excellence. Uh, and, uh, and really, I think we've continued to do that. That's got to build. And, and although uh, you didn't point out Chris or Garrett, they've got to continue to improve. They cannot play uh, game eight as they have in game three, or we will not be where we want to be. So everyone's a part of that. Uh, and uh, we all have to continue to make strides. Thanks, man. All right, we got time for uh, two more questions here with Coach Hartline, and then we'll bring in Coach Madison. Uh, so we will go to Austin Ward from Letter Monroe. Austin. Brian, obviously that uh, drop was not, you know, the kind of splashy play that Julian wanted to make as a freshman. As a coach, how do you how do you turn that into the teaching point? How did he respond to that, uh, putting it on the ground? Well, you know, there was, you know, there were some teaching moments earlier in, in practice that uh, coached up the same technique. And uh, we didn't take it maybe fully to heart, I would say. I think that since then, uh, we have uh, had a much more uh, focused approach when it comes to that technique we've spoken about. And, uh, and hopefully that will continue. Uh, and not that he's ever resistant, but sometimes as uh, very skilled athletes, uh, the coaching, although it's heard, uh, although you listen, you may not really hear it per se. And, uh, and so uh, what, when trying to prevent a future mistake uh, as a coach, uh, the mistake still showed up. So it was a good learning opportunity and uh, re-solidify some things uh, uh, that we believe here uh, in the receiver room. So all good there, but we'll learn from it and grow from it. Thanks, man. And uh, last question, we'll go to Rob Aller from the Columbus Dispatch. Rob. Hey, Brian, you've been part of uh, and seen some pretty good quarterback wide receiver combos. You know, Glenn was back there with Galloway. Hey, where do you put this current quarterback uh, receiver combo? And really what I want to ask you is, what are the details? Can you detail what makes it work? Why does a why does a quarterback receiver what really clicks there to make it great? I think I think we only, Rob, I appreciate that, but I think we only have like thirty seconds to answer this question. It, that'd be a lengthy discussion. But I, you know, where do we compare? I don't know. I mean, give me the win loss column. I'll let you know. You know, because that's that's really what it comes down to uh, when put in a clutch moment. Um, do we make the play? Don't we? Uh, but but to have those kind of combinations to be, you know, really highly skilled, if the quarterback has no freaking time, you can't throw a pass. If the, the receiver doesn't know how to get out of the route, you can't, can't complete it and have clean body language. So there's so much that goes into um, all facets of offensive play. I know you know that. But, you know, it, to, to pinpoint, you know, a group or say, I would say we're very skilled at both positions. I think that we're very, you know, I think we're getting better. I think that we understand that, uh, our route technique and our route timing affects the ability for the O-line to block. And they don't have all day. We never, frankly, have enough time. We're always under the gun. The quarterback's under the gun. So it's still a learning thing. I think at the end of the day, any kind of good passing game always comes down to the details. It's not necessarily skill-oriented. It's not about the overall talent. It's, the about, it's more about the ability to be consistent and hit details and be at the spot you're supposed to be when the quarterback expects you to be there. You know, in its simplest form, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, to have young guys, uh, frankly, even in Chris and Garrett, to uh, uh, learn at such a high pace and, and learn that quickly has been very important. Um, and uh, that has to continue. We're still not there yet. I think those guys know it. And frankly, our details change weekly. So um, our ability to take the meeting room to the field is probably the, the, the most important part of any kind of offensive attack, whether it be in a run game or a pass game. And uh, our ability to execute at a high level will allow everyone at the end of the game, at the end of the year, uh, do those comparisons. But as of right now, it's uh, it's all found in the details, and we focus uh, uh, with immense time on those details. Hey, Coach Hartline, thank you very much for your time. Have a good day. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian.